One more thing before we go tonight. Since this show began almost four years ago, I've really tried not to talk about myself on the air or even use the first person pronoun. The last thing this country needs is more narcissism. It's not very interesting anyway. People who use the word I a lot tend to bore everyone but themselves. But tonight we're going to make an exception to that rule. We don't have much choice. Last week, the New York Times began working on a story about where my family and I live. As a matter of journalism, there is no conceivable justification for a story like that. The paper is not alleging we've done anything wrong, and we haven't. We pay our taxes. We like our neighbors. We've never had a dispute with anyone. So why is the New York Times doing a story on the location of my family's house? Well, you know why. To hurt us. To injure my wife and kids so that I will shut up and stop disagreeing with them. They believe in force. We've learned that. Two years ago, a left-wing journalist publicized our home address in Washington. A group of screaming Antifa lunatics showed up while I was at work. They vandalized our home. They threatened my wife. She called 911 while hiding in a closet. A few weeks later, they showed up again at our house. For the next year, they sent letters to our home threatening to kill us. We tried to ignore it. It felt cowardly to sell our home and leave. We raised our kids there in the neighborhood, and we loved it. But in the end, that's what we did. We have four children. It just wasn't worth it. But the New York Times followed us. The paper has assigned a political activist called Murray Carpenter to write a story about where we are now. They've hired a photographer called Tristan Spinsky to take pictures. Their story about where we live is slated to run in the paper this week. Editors there know exactly what will happen to my family when it does run. I called them today and I told them, but they didn't care. They hate my politics. They want this show off the air. If one of my children gets hurt because of a story they wrote, they won't consider it collateral damage. They know it's the whole point of the exercise, to inflict pain on our family, to terrorize us, to control what we say. That's the kind of people they are. They'll deny this, of course. They'll claim it's just journalism, just the facts. Really? So how would Murray Carpenter and his photographer Tristan Spinsky feel if we told you where they live, if we put pictures of their homes on the air? What if we publicize the home address of every one of the soulless robot editors at the New York Times who assigned and managed this incitement to violence against my family? What about the media editor, Jim Windolph? We could do that. We know who they are. Would that qualify as journalism? We doubt they'd consider it journalism. They'd call it criminal behavior if we did it. And that tells you everything.